they still have an internet presence, or at least who does? I don't know what's happened to Morning Glory, but um, uh, Arthur Gazelle is still around called Uber on Gazelle, and this is part of his website. He's continuing to make new calls, and you can see the skull, um, the skull joined on here. And you know, the internet gives a peculiar kind of life to these things. We may look at it and laugh, but uh, I lectured about unicorns in Lisbon, and the lady in the audience berated me severely for casting doubts at a great length of the doubts of the existence of the unicorn. And she said, well, I've seen all this material. And anybody who deals with Leonardo knows that what uh, people can believe is absolutely extraordinary. Anyway, um, Oberon Gazelle sees himself as a new Renaissance man. <laughs> Leaving aside the fact that's not a self-portrait of Leonardo, but uh, it's the one that always, always stands for it. In a way it's writable, but uh, we see other things on the internet. A uh, nice photograph of a uh, unicorn um, running across what looks to be sand dunes. And on the right, something which is a direct descent from the Cabinet of Curiosities, the Wunderkammer tradition, um, a, a skeleton produced again by the grafting technique, a line poignantly in a rather elaborate, so elaborate box with a, with a very um, decorative insights to cover. So all these things are all part of a kind of sun system which is encouraging us to believe something which is um, which is ultimately, um, ultimately not real. So that's my category, it looks real enough. That's to say our immediate reaction, that looks real enough. More real than real, again the example of this is unsurprising, the Jura rhinoceros. Just a little inset of the drawing in the British Museum, and I was specifically considering the print with its text describing how the rhinoceros was imported into Portugal. And it has come over the ages to embody the very essence of rhinocerosity, which is such a thing. Um, it has ended up by being more like the rhinoceros than the rhinoceros. Um, uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one expressing some mild disappointment in going to the zoo and seeing a rhinoceros and thinking it really doesn't do the job the way that you think it should, particularly by our children's books and this wonderful armored creature which Jura drew somehow and does the job splendidly and then captures a kind of uh, emotional truth about rhinoceros which is um, often not met by the visual truth. Of course there are, I know there are two different sorts of rhinoceros and I will be uh, dealing with that as I go along. Um, where Jura draws his inspiration from is from the sea. And Jura, Jura didn't saw a drawing of the rhinoceros in the description, probably, uh, but never saw it. So if we're dealing with the unseen, or the imagined, or the reconstructed, then we always do it on the basis of what we have, or what Margaret would call schemata. In this case, it's Jura's mastery of the drawing of armor and armored figures and strange creatures. The inset little uh, detail there is from Jura's great master engraving of the uh, Night, Death and Devil, which as I recall is 1514, so it's a year before the uh, rhinoceros, rhinoceros image. Um, another incredibly important aspect in giving conviction is the sheer graphic skill with which this animal is portrayed differentiates across its hide between diff the different kind of optical ways of recording the texture. Um, he's using the same kind of graphic tricks as he was doing in the sort drone game the detail uh, pasted in there below. But that gives us a real sense that he's seen it, that the, the, on the front, on the uh, fore, fore shoulder, those round ones are differentiated from the four Bearish ones at the back, but the way in which the, uh, the pattern goes into the dark and has a certain kind of quality, all absolutely done with it, enormous visual mastery, applying techniques which he'd applied to more naturalistic images. But who could doubt that this is based upon something which is seen if you're looking at it in 1515 when, when Jura actually produced it? Um, it's not actually as it happens totally remote from Indian rhinoceros. Um, zoos very often have African rhinos which 
do not have quite this flinch in appearance. So um, Kira had got hold of something, you know, there was a lot of um, Renaissance armor grafted onto this, um, this particular creature. This one is from the world of the zoo, particularly grand and rather full of specimens of the Indian rhinoceros. Um, other artists looked at it, or other observers looked at it. Um, the image on the on the left is from um, it is by Jan Giacomo Penny, um, who published an account of it, and you can see the title of the account, um, a print with a with a manuscript um, explaining that it was captured in Portugal, etc. Um, not a very good image, not very skillfully drawn. But it shares something in common with the very good image by Hans Bergmeier, the one down below, um, also printed and dated the same year, in that it's got a rope round its foot, a rope round its forelegs. And I suspect that the prototype they're using is probably a drawing of the animal tether. Dura has probably removed that tether for that purpose. But the Bergmeier, in just in terms of giving you information about the that the appearance of the rhino is more naturalistic or in keeping with it matches better to use the non-rectional term than the actual rhino than the juror does. But the Hans Bergmeier image got it's got no real mileage historically. It's Dura that makes the pace all the way through. Into Gesna, into Conrad Gesner's um, wonderful books of um, the animals. And here a, a, a very nice visual trick. The big animals he sometimes shows um, turns the page. Now he's not showing the full scale, obviously, like other models and the other birds, but um, it makes the point very nicely, doesn't it? This is a big thing. You know, to give an idea of it, you turn it on the page and say, This is a big thing. You know, I have to try and fit this in, fit this in somehow. Um, Ambrose Pare, this is an English edition of Pare, which I bought myself from auction and it did come title page. Um, and uh, there again, the Jura rhinoceros by a Gessner, and juxtaposed with a chameleon. If you'd seen neither of these, which one would you believe? Um, the chameleon is beautifully described with its revolving eyes and its, uh, its uh, changes of colour. That seems if somebody who's seen neither of them it seems to be somewhat less credible than the rhinoceros unicornis. So, its Latin name. Um, the entry on the chameleon also notes that if you mash up its body and combine it with, with, with uh, milk, it acts as a depilatory or a bodily hair. I imagine it would. And the, the uses of the animals, of course, are very important. All, all the textbooks, they all go through the names in Latin, in Greek, in Hebrew, and whichever other languages they can get hold of, and where they are. They go through the uses, because these are books which are meant to be useful for people, and they go through the literary appearances and the legends. So these natural history books occupy a very different territory from the uh, current, uh, current style of natural history. And built into all sorts of other fabrics of, um, of knowledge, the fabrics of physio physiognomy in um, 